Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with I Hear Bluebird. <laughs> How true, ladies and gentlemen, is that old saying you hear every June about happy the bride the sun shines upon? Well, that's a question we really can't answer, but we do know a saying you can depend on, and it goes like this. Happy the bride who always keeps a plentiful supply of jello on the pantry shelf. For jello, friends, is a grand dessert that's wonderfully quick and easy to make, as well as inexpensive to serve, and every bride will appreciate that. Jell-O's downright pleasure to eat, too, and every husband will go for that. Yes, with a bright, shimmering mold of jello on the table, contentment reigns supreme. Those six brilliant colors are all just as gay and enticing as can be, from the rich, glowing crimson that makes you think of fresh, ripe raspberries to cool emerald green lime. And those six delicious flavors are gloriously good, extra rich, and just as refreshing and beguiling as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. So try some jello real soon. And when you buy, be sure to look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. Bluebirds played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who had his option picked up last Sunday and now looks 10 years younger, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, the fact that I'm in good spirits today and look younger has nothing to do with my contract being renewed. I'm always this way. Now, wait a minute, Jack. When our sponsor came to your house for dinner last Sunday, you were a wreck. Who, me? Why, I never saw anyone so jittery and nervous. Me, jittery? Yes, you. Until Mr. Mortimer picked up your option, you made a darn fool of yourself. What are you talking about? All evening long it was, have a cigarette, Mr. Mortimer. Have a cigar, Mr. Mortimer. Here, take this chair, Mr. Mortimer. It's softer. Oh, I didn't make such a fuss over him. Go on, he happened to sneeze once, and you sent Rochester out for an oxygen tent. <laughs> Well, I just did that for a gag What's the matter with you two? And the way you waited on him You wouldn't let the man do anything for himself What do you mean? When his shoelace came undone, who tied it? Mary, I happened to be down on the floor at the time <laughs> That's the only reason I did it Well, let me ask you something Why were you laying on the floor in the first place? What? What was that, Phil? I said, why were you laying on the floor in the first place? Phil, you should be the last one in the world to ask anybody why they're laying on the floor at a party. <laughs> why, I, I know bearskin rugs that lead less horizontal lives than you do. <laughs> and incidentally, Phil, you might at least thank me for the good time you had last Sunday. What good time? All we did was play bingo and our sponsor won every game. Boy, was that oblivious. You mean obvious. <laughs> However, there was nothing obvious about it. Mr. Mortimer is lucky at bingo, that's all. I only called the numbers the way they came up. And the way they came up shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forget about it. Frankly, Jack, I, I don't know what the rest of us were playing for. You let Mr. Mortimer bingo every time. All right, so he won the salad bowl. <laughs> but don't forget, he paid 25 cents a card, the same as everybody else. And that salad bowl was a Christmas gift from Eddie Cantor. That's a lie. I got it for my birthday from Olson and Johnson. <laughs> Boy, are they cheap. Just because they're a team, they give one present. <laughs> And incidentally, fellas, it seems funny that you can all criticize and complain. Yet not one of you has the courtesy to mention the delicious food I served. Why, you guys all ate like it was your last meal. Well, until he picked up your option, Jackson, we weren't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Maybe you weren't, Phil, but I wasn't the least bit worried. I knew I was going to be signed up for next season two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Yes, I had definite information. Oh, you and that phony fortune teller. Phony? Mary, there's nothing phony about Madame Zuzu. She clicks like a castanet. <laughs> Why, she's marvelous. Oh, yeah? Four years ago, she told me I was going to marry Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor, she said. All right, so she misses once in a while. <laughs> Why did you have to miss on that one? It was just fate, that's all. Even a crystal ball has an off day now and then. Hey, wait a minute. Madam Zuzu, you know, I went to her place once. You did, Phil? Yeah, she told me I was bashful. Ain't that a Lulu? Bashful? You of all people. And she was sitting on my lap at the time. I can't understand it. <laughs> Me neither. I'd like to take that crystal ball and hit her over the head with it. Mary, will you forget about Robert Taylor? And speaking of Madame Zuzu, fellas, if you knew what she told me about my movie career, you'd all be plenty excited. What did she tell you, Jack? Never mind. You'll read it in the paper next winter. Come on, Jackson, tell us. No, nothing doing. It's a secret. Okay. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Madame Zuzu looked in the crystal... And guess who's going to win the Academy Award next year? Guess who? She ought to be rated. <laughs> All right, just for that, Mary, you're not going with me to the Academy Banquet and hear my acceptance speech. Your acceptance speech? Yes, I'm preparing it now. Well, don't write anything that you can't switch to a letter to your father. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. I wouldn't laugh too soon. By the way, Jack, not changing the subject, but uh, while Madame Zuzu was giving you the lowdown on your option, did she mention who's going to be your announcer next season? Well, I imagine you're the lucky man, Don, although there wasn't room for you in the crystal. But, um, <laughs> I'm sure you're set. And we'll have the same little comedian, eh, Mary? Darn it, and I picked out linen and dishes and everything. Mary, will you forget about Robert Taylor? Anyway, Don... Forget, he says. Mary. Anyway, Don, it looks like we'll have the same old gang again next year. Madame Zuzu saw all of us together in her crystal ball. You better see a lot more of that green stuff in there. You can count me out. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I want a raise. I started to work for you four years ago, and I'm still getting the same lousy salary. Well, you got the same lousy band. <laughs> I have a motto, Phil. As ye play, so shall I pay. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What's wrong with my band? What's wrong? Hmm. You've got three violins that no one's ever heard. <laughs> a guitar... A guitar player who got his strings from a yo-yo top. <laughs> Two piano players that have to put a nickel in for every number. <laughs> and a brass section that must have a sideline. <laughs> and you asked for more money. Well, there's no harm trying. All right, you tried. <laughs> Incidentally, Phil, I've got your contract here in my pocket. So right after the broadcast, I want you to put your usual X on the dotted line. I understand? I can print Phil Harris now. I know. I saw it all over the wall. <laughs> Stop showing off. Well, I guess that takes care of our contract problems for next season. You haven't straightened things out with me yet, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Uh, I thought, uh, Dennis, I thought I mailed you a contract to sign. You did, but my mother tore it up. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Dennis. Supposing you and I go in the other room and talk matters over about next season. I guess we can come to an agreement. Well, my mother says... Come along, that... Dennis. Now, Phil... <laughs> Phil, while... Uh, Phil, while we're in the other room transacting a deal, how about playing a number? Okay, you great big businessman. <laughs> uh, come along, Dennis, my boy. Well, my come mother... Come along now. <laughs> Oh, Phil. What? Play loud so we can't hear Dennis screaming. 
That was Alice Blue Gown, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And very good, Phil. Say, uh, Mary, is Jack in the other room yet? Yes, he's still talking business with Dennis. The kid must be holding out. Yeah, I'm going to open the door and listen. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mary. That isn't ethical. Ethical schmethical. Let's listen in, Dave. <laughs> I will. Now, quiet. Sure, Dennis, sure. I know you're worth it, but that's a little too steep. Well, my mother says that next year I ought to get $500 a week. $500, eh? Uh-huh. Well, well, I'll tell you what, Dennis. They're still at it, boys. How's Dennis making out? He's in the neighborhood of $500, but I don't think he'll move in there. <laughs> you know, that Benny's terrific. You know, he's the guy that started the second cup of coffee is free movement. <laughs> yeah, what a character. Well, I think we ought to get going on with the program, uh... See how they're coming along, Mary. Okay. Absolutely, Dennis. I agree with you, but my budget won't permit it. Well, my mother says Look, Dennis, that... look. <laughs> Dennis, would you be satisfied with $250 a week? $250? Oh, sure, that's swell. I see. <laughs> hmm. Well, now look, Dennis. You're young yet, and you've got your whole future ahead of you. I'll tell you what I'll do. Well, it's still going on. What's the latest report? Ceiling 500, vision 250. <laughs> it looks bad. Why don't the kid walk out on him? He can't. Jack's sitting on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an all-day session. Now, quiet, everybody. You're right, Dennis. You're absolutely right, but... $85 a week is a lot of money. <laughs> After all, you're just a kid. I can't breathe. Move down a little, will you? <laughs> I'm, uh... I'm sorry, Dennis. Now, let's talk this over carefully. I'm sure we can get together. I'll tell you what. Well, that beats everything. What's the figure now, Mary? 85, and they haven't struck bottom. I never saw a guy as tight as Jack. You remember that Gladys Zabisco he used to go with? Yeah. Well, he broke up with her because she took appetite pills. <laughs> and he was nuts about her, too. Well, here goes for another peek. Quiet now, fellas. Okay, Dennis, it's a deal. Thirty-seven fifty a week. <laughs> Sign right here on the dotted line. What's going on here? <laughs> Dennis, please. Here's the pen. Sign right here. Well, I ought to speak to my mother first. All right. Now, here's what you tell her. 
It's the last round, and Dennis is on the rope. What was Jack's final offer? Thirty-seven fifty a week. Thirty-seven fifty? Why the kid's getting thirty-seven now? Yeah, but I guess Jack feels he ought to have a raise. You know. Well, let's go ahead with the program, fellas. We're all set, eh, Dennis? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, Dennis, what did Jackson offer you for next season? Well, I'm gonna. Don't get... tell him, Dennis. Don't tell him. We don't want the others to be jealous of you. Holy smoke! Am I making more money than they are? <laughs> Could be, could be. You know what, Jack? What? You save more money by accident than Harry Lauder does on purpose. Oh, yeah? Well, Mary, I'd be quiet if I were you. A Madame Zuzu looked in the crystal the other day and you were wrapping up a pair of stockings. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Dennis, now that everything has been smoothed out to our mutual satisfaction, how about singing a nice song for us? Okay. What's it gonna be, Dennis? I'm gonna sing... Hold it a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, it's you. Rochester, if you'd listen to the program, you wouldn't always call up and interrupt in the middle of it. Why don't you tune in once in a while? Well, frankly, boss, you don't do the kind of stuff that intrigues me. <laughs> I know. You won't listen to any program where you don't tear something off, send it in, and get something back. <laughs> now, what do you want? What's on your mind? Well, boss, you know Hollywood Park Racetrack opened last Thursday. Yes. And you know how cheap oats are right now. Oats? What are you driving at? I bought a racehorse. Can I keep him in the garage? <laughs> you bought a racehorse? Rochester, how can you possibly afford to buy a horse on your salary? Well, I paid $2 down, and I got 30 days to raise the other $1,800. You mean you have to raise $1,800 in 30 days? Yeah, ain't that fantastic? <laughs> it certainly is. How are you going to get that much money in one lump? My back pay would do it. <laughs> Rochester, if you're referring to your investment in the Benny Protective and Endowment Association... <laughs> That doesn't mature until you're 40. I'll be 40 tomorrow. That's a lie. <laughs> now, Rochester, you take that horse back to wherever you got it. There's no room for it in the garage. There is now. I put the Maxwell out in the street for the summer. Well, put it right back in again. I don't want my car out in the street. Somebody will come along and steal it. I'd like to get a picture of that. I could sell it to pick, click, or flick. <laughs> Rochester, I'm not going to argue with you. Now, you get rid of that broken-down nag. He ain't a broken-down nag. He won over 100 races. Won? All right, run. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, you do as I say. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, boss. What is it now? Uh, I don't like Section 8, Paragraph D of my new contract. What's wrong with it? Section 8 says you get $30 a week. I know, but paragraph D says a week is 14 days. <laughs> I'm trying out something new. <laughs> anyway, we'll discuss that when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. And the idea of buying a racehorse. He'd probably have me out in the morning clocking it. He'll never get up. Well, sing, Dennis. Don't stand there like a dodo. <laughs> Oh, 
night you learn to care. It wasn't my affair. I wasn't even there at all. Oh, where was I the night that you surrendered to a sigh? Where was I? The moon was high. The night that you first listened to a lie Where was I? I always felt that you would melt in someone's arms tonight And I was right The more What a shame that someone else came by. Where was I? A racehorse he has to have. Oh, well. That was Where Was I, sung by Dennis Day, who I'm sure will be with us for many years to come. Yes, sir. If I ever get smart, watch out. <laughs> now, Dennis, you say one more thing like that, and I'm going to take you in the next room and give you a good talking to. Boy, will he be flat-chested. <laughs> Never mind. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American playwright, has written another of his famous one-act plays a hillbilly melodrama entitled The Code of the Hills, or Shoot Me in the Pants, Zeke, the rest is store clothes. <laughs> Set the scene, Mr. Wilson. Gladly. The locale, ladies and gentlemen, is the cabin of the Jake Bennies in a remote section of the Ozark. The Jake Bennies are in the midst of a feud with their longtime enemies and neighbors, the Fudd Allens. Oh, pardon me, Don. I would like to announce, folks, that any resemblance between the Fudd Allen and our play and the Fred Allen of radio is purely intentional. <laughs> if he's not a hillbilly, I never saw one. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. It is six o'clock in the evening, and the shooting has been going on all day. Curtain, music. <laughs> That gun away, Pa. Supper's awaiting. Be right there, Mo. A shooting and a killing, a shooting and a killing. When is it going to stop? We ain't going to quit till them Allens are wiped out. There ain't room in these yard hills for the both of us. You said it, Pappy. <laughs> Get away from them doors, Zeb. Say, Pa, what have you and got again the Fudd Allens? I'll tell you what I got again him. One night I asked Fudd how many hairs on a monkey's face. And he said, the next time you shave, count them. <laughs> he knew I couldn't count. <laughs> well, I ain't a tearing for that kind of city talk, and I ain't forgetting. <laughs> hey, son, barricade that double door. Oh, Pappy. Son. They got me, Pappy. They got me. What was that, Paul? They un got our boy, Zeb. Shot him right through the door. I didn't know he was a-wearing him. <laughs> I'll get them, Allens, for this. Kids don't grow on bushes. No siree. I'm a-going, Pappy. I'm a-getting weaker and weaker. Goodbye, Pappy. Goodbye, Mo. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, what do we got for supper, Ma? Lunch. Good. <laughs> Dish it out. Howdy, Uncle Jake. Hello, Bob Twitch. <laughs> hey, Twitch, you shouldn't have been walking around with your left arm shot up like that. Well, I've been a seeking some cord to tie it up with. It keeps a falling off. <laughs> you know, Twitch, I don't like the way that arm of yours keeps a dropping off. It might be ailing. What's that you got under your other arm? My right leg. 
Oh. Well, put it in the umbrella stand and come to supper. Sit down. Oh, go on. I wish them Allens would hold off till we get through eating. I'm a going, Pappy. I'm a going. Take your time, son. <laughs> Pass the coffee, Ma. Hey, Jake, what happened to Cousin Zeb? One of the Allens plugged him. Have some coffee, Quid. <laughs> oh, go on, don't those Allens know it's supper time? By the way, Ma, where's our daughter, Linda Lou, Nettie Mae, Lily Bell, Harvest Moon? <laughs> Where is she? She went down to the village to buy a girdle. Had her heart set on it. A girdle? Oh, boy, we can have some hot cake. That's griddle. <laughs> What's a girdle, Ma? Something them city gals are wearing. It's like a sweater, only it snaps at you. <laughs> By gum, what'll they be thinking up next? Here she is now. Hello, Linda Lou, Nettie Mae, Lily Bell, Harvest Moon. Hello, Pappy. Hello, Ma. Hello, Linda Lou, Nettie Bell. I mean, Lily Mae. I mean, Nettie Mae. Oh, nuts. Hello. <laughs> we ends have been a worrying about you, gal. You shouldn't be out of doors at a time like this. Why not? Them Allens couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. No, but they could hit yours. <laughs> Sit down, gal. Say, Uncle Jake. What is it, Tweet? Look out the window. Ain't that one of them Allens sneaking up on us? Either that or a polecat. Give him a rifle, Ma. Watch out, Pa. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> he missed me. Oh, yeah? Where's your ear? <laughs> Doggone, and I wanted to hear the pitch bandwagon. Come on, Twitch, grab a gun. That'll teach them vomits. I wish they ends and we would stop this darn feud. Not Foot Allen. He's a feuding this man in these hills. I wonder what makes him so feudy. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Ma, pass me the sugar. <laughs> oh, go on, then. Pick up that spoon, Ma. Never mind, I'll get you another one. I want that one, my hand's on it. <laughs> Thanks. A shooting and a killing, a shooting and a killing. How many more pages to this play? Can't be many. Here comes Porky Wilson now. Hello, Porky. Hello, Jake. Say, what happened to Zeb? Them Allens done plugged him. And none of us ain't safe till this feud is over. I am. I'm so big they're scared to shoot at me. Why, them Allens is as yellow as, uh, as, uh, as, uh... Banana. And speaking of bananas, ladies and gentlemen, do you realize how marvelous they are when sliced over a dish of tempting and appetizing... Now, food? hold on now, Wilson. Did you write this play just to get that in? This gelatin dessert is not only economical and easy to make, but comes in six delicious flavors. Why, you... So look for the big red letters on the box. They spell... Hey, sir! They spell Jell-O. Oh, Mr. J-E-L-L... Oh! That got him. I'm a going, Jake. I'm a going. Me too. Well, that's all for tonight, folks. Will the Jake Bennys win the feud? Will the Fudd Allens be wiped out? Will Porky Wilson recover? I don't know. Hey, Clem, will Porky Wilson recover? I don't know. Hey, Zeke, will Porky Wilson recover? I don't know. Hey, Sam! Let it go! It's not important! My goodness! Play, Phil! Today, ladies and gentlemen, your grocer offers you two great Jell-O products, Jell-O, America's favorite gelatin dessert, and Jell-O puddings, the country's newest dessert sensation. Ever since Jell-O puddings came on the market, they've been steadily climbing in popularity. In fact, right in your own neighborhood, any night in the week, I'll bet you'll find a lot of families sitting down to enjoy a tempting Jell-O pudding dessert for dinner. You've all enjoyed Jell-O, I know. Now enjoy these new members of the Jell-O family, Jell-O butterscotch, chocolate, and vanilla pudding. Tomorrow, do what thousands of other folks do, and when you ask your grocer for Jell-O, ask him also for those delicious new dessert, Jell-O puddings. This is the National Broadcasting Company.